In the last episode, we looked at the success of the S and how this more modest offering from TVR in many ways saved the company, introducing a more affordable entry-level model. But it didn't end there. Oh no. The 1986 to 1988 model year cars were initially just known as the S, but this was soon changed to S1, as continued development saw so many improvements to the car, and the new S2 was therefore introduced in late 1988. A reworked engine provided both more low speed and peak torque, with power slightly increased to 168 bhp. The new engine also meant TVR could now offer a catalytic converter option aimed at export markets, creating the S2C model. When seen side by side, however, the S2 really doesn't seem to have many aesthetic differences over the original car, but look closely in details such as electric windows, chrome strips above the bumpers, a revised interior and 8-spoke OZ alloy wheels show that the S2 really was a perfected package. There was, however, a transition stage between the S1 and S2 where parts and engines were shared across the two generations. These cars are known as the S1.5s, with some examples having the S1's 2.8-litre engine, but the S2's alloy wheels and chrome bumper strips, and other examples looking like an S1, but actually having the bigger 2.9-litre engine underneath the bonnet. In typical TVR fashion, it all gets rather confusing. Then, in 1990, the TVR S3 was introduced, refining the formula and creating an even better sports car. This time the changes were more than just aesthetic too. Technical advancements resulted in a stiffer chassis for a smoother ride and better handling, whilst a totally new body design brought longer doors, meaning this third generation was also easier to live with. The interior was all new as well and incorporated full seat adjustments and the innovative option of a reduced or increased pedal box, personalising the car for the driver. But wait a second, before we reach the final, ultimate iteration of the S, let's rewind and look at the car's motorsport history that brings with it some unknown facts about the model. After the success that driver Steve Cole had in the 420 SEAC racer, Peter Wheeler created an operation to develop a race version of the S series in order to use the racing heritage in promoting the new model further. The car was designed with a turbocharged 2.0-litre Cosworth Evolution engine from the Ford Sierra RS500, and it was modified to produce around 500 brake horsepower for Group A eligibility, and weighing in at only 800 kilograms, this new racing S had a power-to-weight ratio of 615 brake horsepower per tonne. And on its debut race in Macau, the car won. A great way then to start the S series on its successful journey. Back to the S3 then. The S3C headed the range and was designed to meet new European emission laws by having a tweaked exhaust system. The model also received a walnut face dashboard, leather sports seats and electric door mirrors all as standard, creating a more premium S. You can distinguish an S3C from the long-range driving lights in the front air dam, with later versions having a smooth bonnet with four chimera-like vents in each side. And then the S moved up a notch. The V8S was launched in the summer of 1991 and offered a whopping 240 brake horsepower and 275 foot-pounds of torque, causing Autocar magazine to describe it as a weekend event of monumental proportion. Acceleration in fifth gear between 50 and 70 miles per hour took just 5.9 seconds, faster than an Aston Martin Virage, Ferrari Testarossa, Lotus Esprit Turbo and Porsche 911 Carrera. It was insane. Despite the launch of the Griffith, by 1992 the V8S continued to attract interest and sell well, with production reaching three a day in addition to the S3. But the big V8 wasn't the last S produced. The new strength and chassis found its way onto the last 50 V6 cars. These were called the S4C and included all-round disc brakes like the V8S. And so S production had come to an end after eight successful years with the model handing the baton to the likes of the Chimera and Griffith. 
It's been a joy to make this two-part series, and one of the main things I've learned after months of researching is we don't give this TVR enough credit. It's thanks to the S that TVR could enter its most groundbreaking decade, the 1990s, with ambition and an improved reputation. It marked the beginning of a new era for the company under Peter Wheeler's ownership, the best era, and yet has been overshadowed by the more powerful, exuberant models as time has gone on. That doesn't mean all of us will forget how amazing the S-Series was, though. Goodbye.